It was a damp, foggy night in November 1865 when a seven-year-old girl and her parents heard the faint sounds of something approaching them as they walked along Murderer's Lane at Melbury Bub. We heard the breathing of a horse and then we saw it coming round the bend pulling a cart, the girl recalled more than 80 years later. The lantern lights were dim at first, but presently we heard the creaking wheels. The lights were brighter and the horses breathing heavier. It was also real and natural. The little girl's father ordered his wife and daughter to stand aside in the ditch and let Thomas Baker's horse and cart go past adding that he had seen them before. The father stood on one side of the lane, mother and daughter on the other. Speaking in 1949, the daughter, by then aged 90, recalled, as the horse and cart came past, I shut my eyes. I felt so frightened, but I felt it pass. When I looked again, twas gone. All around was the pitch black night, but it's all so plain to me now at ninety as when I was little maid of seven. Since her story was published in the 1949-50 edition of the Dorset Yearbook, the tale of Thomas Baker and his horse and cart has become one of Dorset's better known ghost stories. Welcome to the fourth of our 13 terrifying stories for Halloween. Today we are going to take a deep dive into the ghost story of Thomas Baker of Melbury Bub. This is a true story and makes up just one of the dark and twisted tales that exist in my family history. Yana and I would like to thank everyone for watching. Every time someone views our videos, you give us both encouragement to do what we love. Let us know how we are doing, drop us a comment, and for more upcoming episodes, please subscribe to the channel. From Yana and I, we hope you enjoy the story. A clue to the events behind this ghost story can be found in Melbury Bub Churchyard where a broken gravestone records the death of farmer Thomas alias William Baker, who was barbarously murdered on Bubdown Hill, November 10th, 1694. Baker was driving his horse and cart home with two bags of golden guineas slung across his saddlebags. The proceeds of his sale of corn and cattle at Dorchester Market Two men became aware of his riches and lay in wait on Bubdown Hill. As Farmer Baker approached, one of them lobbed a stone, which hit the farmer in the head. Baker fell to the ground, but his startled horse kept going and made its own way back to the farm with the money bags still draped over the saddlebags. A search party later found the missing man dead on the ground where he fell. The robbers, of course, were long gone. Seven years passed before any further information about the crime came to light, and it only did so then because of the astuteness of the landlord of the King's Arms at Evershot. One day, in 1701, he overheard two of his customers quarrelling over money and discussing the killing of Farmer Baker. He sent for assistance and the two inebriated customers were overpowered and held in the Evershot village lockup overnight. Next day, securely manacled, they were taken along the highway known as Long Ash Lane now part of the A37 Yeovil to Dorchester Road to the county jail. 
at the next Dorchester Assizes, the pair were convicted and sentenced to be taken to the tree in which they did commit willful murder, there to be gibbeted in chains to suffer death. And we charge that none may secure them in their need and distress. May the Lord have mercy on your souls. The task of making the cage fell to the Evershot village blacksmith. It was made of iron bars and included rests for the men's necks and buttocks. The cage was fixed to a tree at the scene of the crime, with the men secured by chains and guarded by watchmen to await their fate. They were still alive when an old countrywoman named Martha Spigots passing the gibbet on her way back from Yeovil and presumably not knowing the order for them not to receive any secure heard the killer's desperate pleas for water and took pity. She had no water to offer but instead fished a couple of tallow candles from her basket and pushed one into each man's mouth. Poor Martha also now found herself in trouble and, according to local tradition, was sentenced to seven years in the county jail. The two murderers soon succumbed to the inevitable, but more than 300 years later, there are still reminders of their deed. The scene of their crime is still known as Gibbet's Pit, while the route followed by Farmer Baker's horse and cart after his death is called Murderer's Lane. To this day, his ghost is still said to haunt the lane where he was murdered. And maybe, just maybe, the cries of pity from the condemned men tethered inside their gibbets can be heard too.